Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, we're a few weeks out now from the finale of Season 3 of Tiny Voices, and I want to just take a minute and reflect on the season and my feelings about how things went. Uh, a little post-mortem, if you will. So first off, uh, so let's start with the things I'm happy about. Uh, first, my production and research schedule was better leading into the season. I nailed down, I think, 8 out of 10 topics well in advance of the season starting. I'd begun production work for like the first four episodes at least a month ahead of time. So I had less work to do in that crunch period in the week leading up to the episode's release. Uh, and I kept that up decently throughout the rest of the season with lapses here and there. But I'm happy with how uh, spread out and well-scheduled the production was, for the most part. I think it led to, especially in the earlier episodes in the season, uh, a lot more polish. Between seasons two and three, I feel like there was a noticeable bump in all-around quality, both the visual content, the topic selections, the depth I went into, the variety. Uh, midway through season two, I was kind of unhappy with how things were going and still feeling a little bit lost. Uh, and like, I, I was having a hard time defining what that show's voice uh, was going to be, even though we were halfway into a second season. And that led to a few episodes which were novel, and they had some fun information in them, like, I had fun researching them, but they felt like, almost like, listicles in a way, uh, a little lacking in like a central thesis and more, hey, here's just a bunch of cool, discreet facts about some different things that happen. These are fun. And that's all right. But that also doesn't feel like tiny voices to me. I, I, I didn't find that groove yet by that point. Now, between seasons two and three, I feel like I actually found the, the voice for tiny voices. And that's a little more well-defined now. So I'm really happy overall with that and the quality bump from, from three to two or from two to three, I, I should say. Um, I can feel myself getting better at this, which is important, uh, as long as I'm not backsliding. So there's that. Um, even though there were there were some unplanned four gap weeks, I'm still overall pretty pleased with how things were handled from a scheduling standpoint. Like, I'm happy that I allowed myself to break the season up a little bit in the middle and have a plan for that and not have... Uh, especially the mid-season break, be this out-of-the-blue thing. The gap week actually gave me a lot of breathing room, and that made producing the latter half of the season a lot less stressful. And then there's a couple of episodes that I'm, I'm just plain proud of. Uh, the Game Feel episode is one of my favorites that I have done. I'm ecstatic about that one, how that one came out, especially being that it set the tone for season three since it was the first episode of the season. The Uncanny Valley episode, uh, the ARG episode, the Hearthstone episodes, those were the other ones I'm really incredibly satisfied with. Everything about how those ones came together, like the complete package, including the B-roll, which I'll get more into later, and the, the narrative through lines of those episodes went more or less how I planned for them to go. And it's nice when you have a cohesive vision for how you want something to go, and then everything just goes according to plan. It's such a, a nice, sublime feeling. And now, uh, as far as the negatives go, things I, I certainly want to continue to improve upon for Season 4, uh, there, are there are a few key things. Like, I still find my endings to be incredibly weak. Uh, a lot of episodes with strong thesis statements and arguments and with a bit of a whimper not only in the, the the closing statement, but the transition out of the episode, the outro, that stuff. I need to really hunker down and, and punch that stuff up. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself an entire day after I've written a script just to do the ending. I'm not even talking about going back through and doing a second pass over the script the next day. I mean, just concentrating on that one element uh, the next day after I've had some time to to uh, percolate and had some time to rest because I feel like what happens is 
Like, I, I crunch to finish a script, and then by the time I get to the ending, I don't give that the same love and attention, which leaves them a bit limp or stilted, because I'm just so... Uh, I'm just so over the script writing process, and I'm still, like, I'm just exhausted at that point. So, that's something that's got to improve. Uh, also, there's a lot of room still for what I would call production polish. Uh, stuff like visual aids, the effects, the transitions, stuff like that. To make the visuals flow better, and to better reflect the content of the argument that I'm making in the episode. Uh, one specific thing that I'm thinking about is, like... I hate whenever I have to present an infographic, like a chart. It's always in such a weak way. Like, the graph in the Hearthstone episode is one that immediately pops into mind. Uh, just like a plain, non-stylized chart that's overlaid over, I think it was the, the tavern background for Hearthstone. Which doesn't really fit, it's, it's just kinda eh. That's the kind of thing that I want to polish up and work on. Oh, and I really, really need a new thumbnail and new graphics. Uh, I think that's... I, I think we've worn out the current one. I'm gonna have to commission some folks between now and Season 4's production startup. And in a similar vein, my B-roll game is still not entirely on point. Uh, the B-roll doesn't always fit. I don't vary it up enough. Some Season 3 episodes were, were pretty good about this, actually. Uh, the Game Feel episode, the Hearthstone episode, I think the Uncanny Valley episode was pretty good about its B-roll. <sighs> but to be honest, I think I tend to get lazy with that stuff. Uh, I think it's indicative of the fact that I, I tend to slack on chipping away at production throughout the week. Or leading up to it. And then I, I wind up crunching on Tuesday and Wednesday. And I have a habit of that, and I'm a procrastinator, and I've known this for 27 years about myself, so... I go over an episode, and I go, oh, I sure could use some something here, some kind of specific B-roll here, a clip there, and it's either so late that I'm, I'm out of time, basically, unless I want to delay the episode a day. Uh, and go off schedule, or I'm so ready to be done after crunching for like all of Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, after working and putting up videos and doing other stuff those days too, that I either uh, don't have time to go and capture more footage or hunt down a clip or whatever, or that I'm just like, I am mentally like checked out, ready to, to just encode the episode and go. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's, it's a little bit... A symptom of procrastination I would guess so getting over my procrastination and also continuing to spread out production over a longer period so I'm not crunching as hard should alleviate that uh, I also want to do more primary source reporting and interviews which was a goal for season 3 going in uh, and it was present in some episodes but a lot of stuff wound up falling through with respect to interview subjects who just kind of went radio silent or we couldn't schedule something that fit the production schedule. Uh, either way, I want that stuff to play a larger role in Season 4 alongside all of the painstaking research and sourcing that I already do. I want to be adding more primary source, like original interviews, to that pool of information that I can, fu that I can infuse in the episodes. I guess there is one more thing that I should probably mention even though it's a little bit more uh, inside baseball, I guess. That's that because uh, these are higher effort videos with a more niche uh, audience. It's, it's just the reality that fewer people who come to the channel are coming here specifically for tiny voices uh, than the usual LPs. So I feel like I should really be doing a better job promoting tiny voices specifically. Uh, I should be doing a better job promoting that and doing my, you know, my call to actions more to engage the smaller audience that Tiny Voices does get. Which I traditionally have not done a super great job of, but that's more of, I guess, a behind-the-scenes thing about metrics and audience growth and retention and all that stuff that nobody cares about hearing about. That all just sounds like marketing speak. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that seems reasonable. You know, you ask anyone who does anything remotely creative about their work, and most of them will tell you, Oh, it's shit. I, I hate it. It's terrible. And I like 
anyone am my own worst critic, so I tend to beat myself up pretty bad about the quality of things I make. I've gotten better about that in recent years, but I'm still pretty uh, bad about how harsh I am on myself. But I feel like this was a pretty reasonable, objective post-mortem of Tiny Voices Season 3. As for Season 4, uh, Tiny Voices will be back next year, probably. Oh, I don't know. Sometime in March. I mean, I tentatively say. The exact date is going to be announced well in advance, but I think I'll shoot for March for now. Uh, no promises. <laughs> that could always get pumped back. There's a possibility that I'm going to pair Season 4 back to uh, an 8-episode season. However, I would like to actually try to do two seasons next year. One in March, and then hopefully Season 5 maybe in October or mid-September. Uh, but those plans there for the future. For now, uh, that's gonna do it. The near Automata fan uh, finale is coming up later this evening, uh, so be sure to tune in in a couple hours for that. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one. Enjoy!